What's up guys, my name's Stu, and today we're taking a closer look at the Remastered Odyssey class in Star Trek Online. The Remastered Odyssey class is now live on Star Trek Online, at least it is for PC console players, you'll probably have it in a month or two. So today we're going to be taking a closer look at the ship to highlight some of the changes that were made from the previous model, because they changed a bit more than just the hull material and the escape pods. First we'll go over how to claim the new Odyssey skin. It's actually very easy because technically there really isn't anything to claim, you just kind of already have it as long as you own any of the Odyssey variants. Just go over to the ship tailor, hit customize ship. You see I am currently running my Lexington Dreadnought, so I've got a bunch of different Odyssey variant skins. But of course we're here for the new one, and there it is, the revamped Odyssey class. Now I noticed something, um, a little peculiar about the template that they're using. You see, while the actual model itself has been updated, some of the components here, mainly the pattern and the colors that they're using, are left over from the old template from the older model of the Odyssey. And they're not exactly accurate to a lot of the promotional pictures that we've seen from, uh, you know, that have been released by Cryptic or, you know, from what we saw in Star Trek Picard. You can tell because the uh, the pattern they used is the Andromeda pattern, and the Andromeda pattern leaves these sort of gray lines along uh, certain parts of uh, like the colored in portions, like you see over here, like along this line, and then you, know, you can definitely see it across the uh, the nacelles. See these lighter gray portions, and it's also really obvious here alongside the deflector dish, and then alongside the lower portion of the star drive section. Oh, you can also see it here. Uh, by the sensor dome and the captain's yacht. But don't worry, because I have the correct hull pattern to use in order to get the accurate look to what you see in Star Trek Picard. Instead of using the Andromeda pattern, use the Cassiopeia pattern. This one is much more accurate. I think that's the one that was supposed to be intended for the ship. I don't know why it wasn't applied to the template. It was probably just an oversight that got overlooked. But if you change it to the Cassiopeia pattern, see, now it fills in those lines but still stays in pattern with what you saw on the both the promotional pictures that we saw uh, Cryptic release and from Star Trek Picard itself. The lighting in the tailor is really not great for this new hull material. There we go. Yeah, it fills in those lines really nicely. Now, the other issue is the coloring is still a bit lighter from what we saw in those promo pictures, but that's an easy fix. You just got to darken it up. So I've been using the darkest color that you can get. That is there we go, dollar sign 08. Yeah, that fills that in really nicely. Yeah, that darkens it up really nicely, creates a really nice contrast between these portions and the lighter sections of the hull. Uh, you could go with uh, a shade lighter. I haven't really figured out which one it is because, you know, the lighting in Star Trek Online can be so drastically different from map to map just based off of the photos that Stowe has released. It's kind of hard to tell, so you could go either way, you know, until Thomas Maroney, you know, gives us uh, a heads up on which one is the correct color code to use, but in the meantime, I've just been using dollar sign 09 because I feel like that's the right one, but again, I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, this is the way to get the most accurate look to what we saw in Star Trek Picard the Cassiopeia pattern and either the dollar sign 09 or the dollar sign 08 color pattern on both colors. Also, before I move on, someone on Twitter asked me if the new revamp skin was available on the free version of the Odyssey, you know, the old, the old fleet version that has the shuttle bay instead of the Aquarius, and uh, I didn't have an answer then, but I can confirm now that yes, it is. Still includes the shuttle bay, even. So that means this revamp is available on every playable version of the Odyssey class. So that includes the Odyssey Star Cruiser from the Fleet Store, the Odyssey Tactical Cruiser, the Odyssey Science Cruiser, the Odyssey Operations Cruiser, those are the Tier 5 versions. Plus the Yorktown Science Star Cruiser, the Sojourner Operation Star Cruiser, the Endeavor Tactical Star Cruiser, the Legendary Verity Command Dreadnought Cruiser, and the Terran Lexington Miracle Worker Dreadnought Cruiser. The revamped Odyssey skin is available on all of those ships, plus any other Odyssey variants that Cryptic might release in the future. Though with this many playable versions already in the game, I doubt we'll see any more in the near future. But I can hope though. Okay, here is the old Odyssey model, as we've seen, you know, for years now. I believe this one was updated uh, when the Tier 6 ships were introduced. They had to make a few tweaks to the older model, like the original original model, uh, to make it compatible with the newer Tier 6 models that were being released, those being the Yorktown, Sojourner, and the Endeavor. 
pretty easily recognizable. It's got the older Type 6 hull, it's got these low poly phaser emitters, the older style windows and escape pods, which have been around since the original days of the game. Uh, it's got these ugly browned RCS uh, thrusters. It's still using the gold Delta emblem, which those that changed. Yeah, the original Odyssey, like it, it was it was amazing for the time. But yeah, it's definitely shown its age. Now compare that to the new Odyssey model and oh man, what a difference. Look at this thing. It's so clean. Look, this hull material is gorgeous. This, this revamped type six hull material is just absolutely amazing. I love it. One of the big differences you can definitely see, like I said earlier, new escape pods. Now, uh, these are based off of the ones that were used on ships like the Sovereign and the Akira, but these are an original uh, texture. These are completely new. Same with the windows. They're very reminiscent of the uh, of the Sovereign, but this is a new pattern. We can also see here the Delta is a different color instead of the the old one, which was gold with a black border, kind of like what we saw on the like earlier, like late 24th century ships, much like the Sovereign or the Intrepid. It is now silver or white. I'm not sure which one is it's like a silver or white with a red border around it that matches like this red stripe going down the side. Still made the switch from the old gold Delta to this white Delta when they started making the switch over to tier six ships. But with this revamp, I'm guessing they're just going to make it so that the White Delta is just the general look for the 25th century, at least for their ships. Another subtle but noticeable change is over here by the sensor dome. Uh, you can see in the uh, in the previous one over here, it's much farther back along the saucer and this like, you know, layered look, it's much further back and much smoother. Kind of gave it a more rigid look over here, give it some more, I don't know what these are, but some, you know, more tech bits around the side of it to make it look more functional. And if you zoom in closely in here, they've widened this portion out to make room for a captain's yacht, which we also see a captain's yacht. This is the same one that we see on the, uh, the Yorktown class, which the Yorktown also got one during its revamp. Another subtle thing that you really won't notice it until you actually look at it. See this like crossbar that goes over the deflector, how it kind of it doesn't really connect with the double necks over here. It just kind of starts from underneath it. Well, in the new one, they made it so it actually connects to the double necks, creating a sort of like a sort of like a uh, like like the whole piece, like the whole like double neck portion along with this is sort of like cradling the secondary uh, hull with inside of it, which I thought was kind of like a really interesting, like aesthetic choice. You can kind of see like the original Odyssey was kind of going for that look already, but they're really kind of reinforcing it here with this look. Going in closer to the secondary hull, again, you can see the old gold Delta. Uh, also, this red stripe went down farther. Now, they've changed that a little bit because on the revamp, they've actually put text in between those red lines, which again, they did this on the Yorktown as well. So now it includes Starship, your ship name, United Federation of Planets. This is meant to be a sort of a, a clear shout out to the Refit Constitution, which also introduced that. It's been on a few other ships as well, like the Intrepid and I think the Sovereign as well, and and probably a few others. But yeah, now the Odyssey has it too. Now, you can really only see it when you're zoomed in this close, which, you know, you can see it really nicely here in Demo Record. Uh, but you're not going to get a great look at that in the game, but you have the satisfaction of knowing it's there. But uh, at the same time, they've also uh, left the old registry number that kind of interrupts the line too, which I mean, that's just kind of part of the Odyssey's aesthetic. And I really like that they've left that there. There's also a docking port over here, too. That's kind of neat. Here's a closer look at the underside of the saucer section. You can see the sensor dome much farther back than it is on the revamp. We got the torpedo tubes up here, and then there's just kind of like a bunch of blank space up here, which I don't know, I always thought was kind of just odd. Like, there really could have been something over here, which they have. There we go. They moved the sensor dome up, added uh, Captain's Yacht, which I really wonder what this whole thing looks like. I love to see this thing, you know, undock and, you know, actually like see the whole model. I, I'm really curious to see what this uh, Captain's Yacht actually looks like. Yeah, also in this picture, you can see uh, this uh, sort of grilling on the inside of the double necks. You can see here a little bit over here, too. I've got better shots of this later. But uh, yeah, the I thought that was a really nice choice just to add because it uh, kind of adds some functionality uh, to the double necks. OK, now a close up between the necks again. The uh, the dome is further back. There's not really anything in here. Just a bunch of windows, uh, these little rectangular bits. Uh, I forget what those were called. There, there uh, the the blog released sort of like a uh, technical layout of like what, what all the little bits are. These were like quantum phase variants compensators or something like that. 
But yeah, there's not really much in here on the old model, but you go to the new one. Uh, not only have they added a shuttle bay in here, they, uh, the, the quantum face thingies, they made them smaller so they could fit this in here. But yeah, I, a shuttle bay, I think this is a really great use of this space because like it's certainly big enough. And yeah, it's just, you know, why not? More shuttle bays. It's because the Odyssey class is huge. It, you know, of course, it would have room for more shuttles. You can also see in this one uh, the this grilling that they put on both sides of the uh, the double necks. Uh, Thomas Moroni said this was meant to be sort of uh, a way to give some functionality to the double necks because you know, aesthetically, there's no reason to use the double necks as opposed to a single neck. So he wanted to give like the impression that there was some sort of technical reason for going with the double neck look. And that's what these uh, vents were introduced for to give the, you know, get to give more of an impression in that direction. Still no idea what the functionality is for. Like, you know, how does, you know, two necks instead of one increase more speed when, you know, when you're in space. But, you know, who cares? <laughs> it looks cool. Here's a more forward-facing look on this section of the ship. Yeah, so shuttle bay there, the two grilling sections. Yeah, it's just, it's, they really did a better job of utilizing this empty space in here to really make it look like there's just more going on in here. Okay, now for the top section of the saucer. Uh, some big differences here is uh, these two phaser strips and these two fleet logos over here. Those disappear on the revamp. So instead of the two phaser strips, we've got one big phaser strip across the front, which let's, there you go, that's a better look at that. One big phaser strip across the front, plus the fleet logo has been moved to being above the name now. The fleet logo is in that position on the Yorktown as well. And speaking of the Yorktown, those uh, those small phaser strips actually make a return on the Yorktown, so it kind of implies that the refit adds those extra phaser banks back. You can also see some extra detail on this like reinforced section of the forward hull, which, fun fact, this reinforced section of the hull, this is literally meant for, you know, when the ship has to go to ramming speed and actually ram into a ship. This, that's literally why this section of the hull is reinforced. And I think that is hilarious because, yeah, to keep ramming speed in mind, that's just kind of great, especially considering how Star Trek Nemesis went. Anyway, the, uh, the, the revamp kind of it adds a little bit more texture to this area of the, of the ship, but also uh, as these little little latch doors over here, which these are, according to that, uh, the, the technical display that was on the blog, these are supposed to be some sort of heavy probe launchers. Not really sure what those are for or how they're different from normal probes, but that's kind of an interesting detail just because, yay, more scientific stuff. Because again, this is a Starfleet ship. Of course, it's going to have, you know, stuff for scientific equipment like that. But yeah, you can see here on the old model, a lot less definition on this forward section and on the little launchers for the heavy probe launchers. Yeah, it's definitely a difference. And it's just some little details like this, like really, really make this ship what it is. Some other differences, uh, you can see the the, uh, the bridge module over here. I'm pretty sure it's actually been moved forward a little bit. They've also had some other things like these extra escape pods. Those are there. Honestly, I'm pretty sure this is the same bridge dome that was used on the Yorktown. Not 100% sure on that, but I'm like 80% sure. I'll have to go back and look at that. At these angles, you can also get a good look at the differences in the nacelles. In the old one, they kind of, you know, swoop up and then swoop back down. But in the new one, they kind of swoop up and then they kind of swoop back down, then back up again, creating more of a finned look. Remember Thomas Maroney saying uh, he was inspired to make these fins kind of, you know, for one, it kind of gives it sort of a hot rod look, you know, very a little bit, you know, kind of subtle, but, you know, it's there. But also because the, you know, fins come, you know, commonly uh, associated with marine life and the Odyssey has been commonly referred to as the space whale, you know, for a long time now. So that's kind of what inspired this finned look on the cells. You can also get a closer look at the difference between the RCS thrusters here. They're just kind of they're just kind of dull brown on the old model, whereas here they actually look like, you know, maneuvering thrusters. Oh, another difference. Uh, that's a phaser cannon. That's not on the old model. Yeah, see, there's no, there's nothing up there, but they added a phaser cannon to uh, both sides of the forward section, largely because, you know, that was more for the sake of uh, gameplay mechanics, because it needed uh, a cannon weapons point because, you know, they made a dreadnought version, which dreadnoughts can equip dual cannons. So they needed uh, a cannon port. So there it is. But yeah, since this is the model that made it into Star Trek Picard, that's cannon. The Enterprise F has both phaser beam emitters and heavy cannon uh, weapons mounts. It's also got turrets. More on that in a bit, because you'll see some of those later on. Actually, one of them is like way back here. Now the back end of the saucer. Uh, so again, some differences here. You can see just how flat this uh, the top section of the saucer is. Uh, there's also some changes made to the shuttle bay. Yeah, just look at this. 
this section, there's been sort of a layered look to here where that adds all these escape pods, plus this docking hatch. This, uh, this is very reminiscent of the docking hatch that you see used in the first Star Trek movie for the refit Enterprise. That's where uh, Spock's shuttle comes in. Yeah, this is very, me very much meant to be an homage to that. These four little squares over here with like this nondescript greebling in there. Yeah, just little, you know, nondescript tech bits for the ship that, you know, kind of give, give the ship a little bit of character. But instead of that, they've added these, which are a huge improvement. These are sort of like, um, I think they call them like warp field regulators or something like that. Gimbled warp field governor. That's what it is. But yeah, the inspiration for these, according to Thomas, was that they were actually inspired by the Sagan class. It actually has uh, similar devices along its hull, so he figured these were sort of a, a good placement for those old square greebled sections. You know, actually give some functionality to those because, again, that's, you know, part of the ship's aesthetic. And you didn't want to take this away, but, you know, sort of enhance it instead, which, again, just brilliant. Another big change back here is the shuttle bay that's been segmented for instead of being one big door. It's actually three smaller doors. I also added these little operations areas above the each shuttle bay too. Again, these are kind of reminiscent of the uh, the old Constitution class. They always had uh, a section of windows that was above the shuttle bay, which was meant to be sort of an operations area. That's why the windows are red, because the windows were red on the refit Constitution's version too. Yeah, the uh, the segmented shuttle bay, I think that was just mainly there because the Yorktown received that too. Though so, um, I think the main reason uh, Thomas introduced this to both the Odyssey and the Yorktown is I think he wanted to kill any uh, ideas that the Defiant could fit inside the shuttle bay of the Odyssey. Because this was a big thing back when, uh, you know, earlier, earlier in the days of the Odyssey class, that people were thinking that the shuttle bay was so big it could fit a Defiant. So people were saying, why can't we get uh, Defiant hangar pets for the Odyssey? Well, that's not going to happen now because segmented. And even then, I'm pretty sure someone proved that the uh, Defiant is still technically too big to fit, even in the old shuttle bay. So that still wouldn't have worked either way. But yeah, that would have been fun. But yeah, it's not definitely not going to happen now. Though I still hope we get Defiant hangar pets on something because that's still a really cool idea. Also at this angle, you can see this section of the hull, very reminiscent of like the darker sections of the Sovereign class, uh, which stretches all the way down here into this bay by the, uh, the by the impulse engines. Yeah, just some nice texturing that I thought looked really nice. You can see, you know, it's kind of here on the uh, the old Odyssey, but it's just it's just gray. This actually has like some pattern in it and it looks really nice. Oh, one more thing about this section. You can see down here just below the shuttle bay. These are supposed to be uh, like rapid deploying uh, auxiliary craft launchers. And, um, you know, so basically, you know, shuttles or like some sort of other auxiliary craft can launch quickly out of here instead of, you know, out of the shuttle bay where it would probably be slower. So, and uh, my thinking here is that these are what the uh, the worker bees would launch out from, you know, from that console of the um, the tier five Odyssey, the science version, the tier five console that launches worker bees that will repair the ship uh, while you're in combat or even out of combat. Yeah, I think that's what these are for. I don't know if that's what Thomas had in mind with him, but that's my head cannon. Stretching further back down the secondary hull. Yeah, there's just uh, there's. Honestly, not that much detail in this uh, portion of the hull. You can see more of the, uh, the quantum phase variants, compensator thingies. Another detail here is the windows are kind of weirdly curved in this section on the old model. I always thought that was kind of odd. Like, it looks fine when you're just looking at the profile, but from this angle, it's very noticeable. Like, there's a weird curve going inside, and it's just, yeah, it's weird. But they fixed that here. These just, yeah, these line up way better on the newer with the newer windows. We also added here, this is a phaser turret. Uh, I spoke about this a little earlier, but yeah, this is, I mean, really it's just where turrets or an Omni beam would fire in the game. But yeah, canonically, that is uh, a phaser turret. You can also get a better look at the uh, the auxiliary impulse engines, which are on the pylons. Yeah, these look fantastic. There's the aft torpedo bay right there and there. You can also get a good look at the Aquarius in here. Now, uh, the downside to the revamped model is that the Aquarius did not get a revamp with this. So it does get some, you know, it does get some touch ups thanks to the new hull material. But yeah, you can clearly see old style phaser strips on here. Yeah, I, you know, fingers crossed one day, one day they get around to revamping the old Aquarius model. But, uh, you know, until then, that's going to be like that. Fortunately, it's not that noticeable because it's always kind of tucked in the back of the Odyssey class, but it would be a nice touch to see that get a uh, to get a revamp as well. Moving further back to the nacelles, you can see, you know, another look at the difference in the shape. The old ones kind of slope down at the end, whereas the new ones slope up more at the end. 
Another difference is, you know, the color of the name and the registry number printed on the nacelles. You know, the, this is meant to be a darker portion of the hull, so the darker, uh, the darker print for the name and registry didn't really make a lot of sense here. So they made it white, which honestly, that's just really smart there. I, I, I really like that. Another detail they added is a little RCS thruster here at the end of the nacelles. There's one on the other side too. Another detail that they added here is an RCS thruster. Which, I like that. We've seen RCS thrusters on other ships in Star Trek. I know we clearly see them on the Galaxy and the, um, what's the other one? Sovereign. Even the Constitution refit had them, too. A little bit of a wider shot for uh, the revamped model. You can see the name and registry number are printed on both sides of the end of the nacelles, but the RCS thruster is only on the outer sides of the nacelles. Okay, moving to the forward section of the nacelles, where we can kind of see the Bussard collectors. These are the old ones. You can, you know, it's not really much to say here. But you move on to the new ones. The color's a little different. It's a little more of a deeper red. They're still kind of orangey over here. And the shape is a little different too. They've kind of pulled this bottom one in to kind of make room for, forget what they called this, some sort of like field regulator in the bottom of here for the Bussard collectors. But yeah, that's there. They've also added some like little graphics up here to like, you know, show off some sort of paneling around the nacelles. I'm pretty sure like the forward end is bigger too. Like these, yeah, around the Bussard Collectors and like the forward section of like the uh, the nacelle grills. This looks a little larger than the old one, so I think they kind of, you know, beefed up the, the forward end a bit. Oh, and this section where the uh, the pylon connects, they've added this little like, uh, I don't know, this little like bulbous, I don't, I don't know, for lack of a better term, this bulbousy section to uh, where it connects. Yeah, that's not there on the original. Yeah, you can see it's not down here either because I mean, I think it was meant to kind of cover up this seam a little bit because that looks a little rough over there. But then you clear it over over here. It looks looks a lot cleaner with this. Also, in this angle, you can see a little difference in some of these graphics Add a little little port over there. I'm not really sure what that's for, but it's there. A couple other differences. There's uh, I think this is sort of either I think the uh, the graphic calls this a, uh, a tractor beam emitter. It looks more like a torpedo launcher to me, but yeah, they made this smaller and moved it a little further back over here. Also, this section of the hull. There's there's not much like there's no seam here uh, on the old model, but they added one here, which I thought was kind of interesting because, again, what I was talking about earlier, how it kind of looks like, you know, the double necks are sort of cradling the uh, the secondary hull into the, uh, you know, in, so it's kind of like holding on to it. Yeah, we, it kind of, you know, reinforces that impression here from the back end, too, as well as the front. One thing that surprised me, you see these little red arrows all pointing toward the Aquarius? And yeah, they took those out. That, was, that surprised me a little bit, because I figured that's something I would have kept, because, you know, those were meant to be like, you know, hey, this part separates, don't step here. But now those are gone. Because you can still see them on the, um, uh, the front end of the saucer, too, where the saucer separates, but yeah, those are gone over here. And to wrap up, these are just some profile shots. Here is... Uh, the lower section of the original Odyssey model, you can really see here where, you know, how far that center dome moves up. The overall shape of the model really doesn't change at all, though. Here's the, uh, the top end. Again, you can see where the phasers move instead of the two little ones, you get the one big one, and where the, uh, the UFP logo, uh, moves. You can see this darker section of the hull around here, this is, like, thicker on the older model, and these sections are, don't go quite as far up as on the on the new one. Look at this, this goes way farther up, but this is a bit thinner. Which is probably why these move further up, there's more room for them. And yeah, if you look at the cells, yeah, the, the newer ones definitely look a little bigger, a little thicker. Which I like, you know. Gives a little bit more definition to them, because the old ones, the old Odyssey nacelles, they're very thin. I've never really, like, disparaged the old Odyssey nacelles, you know, because they, they are somewhat thin for the size of the ship. I've never really seen that as a bad thing, though, because, you know, newer technology technically meant to be smaller, so it doesn't... It doesn't necessarily mean that newer nacelles have to be bigger. You know, bigger doesn't necessarily mean faster. These could just be more compact and more efficient. Of course, that theory is kind of blown out of the water when you look at the Yorktown's nacelles, which are freaking huge. And a side profile, again, you can kind of see where this uh, extra layer comes in. Again, I always thought that was kind of cool that they've added that. Kind of gives a little reminiscent of, you know, the uh, the even thicker layering that the Yorktown gets. But yeah, the overall shape of the ship really doesn't change all that much. The bridge layer is a little higher, too. I guess that's because, the, you know, of that layer they added. So, of course, the bridge would be a bit higher. But yeah, the only difference there is the, the bridge. Uh... 
you know, this section over here, this... Well, that, that kind of angles up a little bit, whereas this kind of angles smoothly into uh, the delta section. That's interesting. But yeah, and then there's the flaring at the end of the cells. Yeah, you can really see the difference in the shape of the pylons, too, here. Yeah, they're much like... They're, they're kind of thicker, more round in this, but they're kind of, you know, smaller, a little more sleek looking in, uh, in the new revamped version. You can also see where the uh, the changes in the red stripe go down here. It like starts way over here and goes all the way down here. But here it's a little lower and it only goes to that seam in the back where it kind of separates back there. It's also a bit smaller, too. You can kind of see the registry number is quite a bit smaller, which again, I don't knock that either because the smaller numbering uh, kind of gives the impression of just how big the Odyssey is meant to be, which that's that's an important thing because the Odyssey is a huge ship, so, I mean, you kind of want to give the idea that, you know, of just how big it is. And with a video game, that can, that kind of scaling can be a little difficult to convey, you know, especially when it's just the ship itself. So making things kind of look a little smaller like that can really like give the impression of just how big the ship is. That's also why the escape pods are a bit smaller, too. You can see these big, you know, the big, the old escape pods are kind of big and, you know, kind of clunky looking, but with these new escape pods, you know, they use the, you know, based these off the old Sovereign style escape pods, they're smaller and more clustered together. You can also see there's a lot more of them spread across uh, the newer Odyssey hull, which again, I thought that was a really ni nice touch because again, the Odyssey is a huge ship and it has a huge crew. I think, you know, again, to the um, technical layout thing, you know, this thing, <laughs> the Odyssey has a crew of 1600. That is a lot of people. So yeah, that is the revamped Odyssey class. Man, I, I love this ship so much. It is so gorgeous. They got Thomas Moroni did a absolutely wonderful job, and I am so glad that not only is this in the game, but the ship is canon. The ship made it into Star Trek Picard. It is canon forever. You cannot deny that anymore. Ugh, I and I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm just it, I'm just so happy. That's all. That's really <laughs> that's the only emotion I can convey right now. Just, just looking at this ship. It's so it's so it's so wonderful. And I'm glad we finally have it. Now I just need a model of it because I have a couple models of the Odyssey, but they're all they're all out of date now. So uh, whoever's taking charge of the uh, the old Starships collection since Elon Musk went under, uh, at, you know, revamped Odyssey uh, XL model when, please, hopefully. Uh. Let me know what you guys think of the Odyssey revamp down in the comments down below, unless you have anything bad to say about it, in which case um, I don't want to hear it because I'm in a good mood and that's just going to annoy me and it will probably just get you banned from the channel because I'm that petty. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Kind of. But anyway, yeah, comment down below. Make sure you like and subscribe while you're down there and hit that bell for notifications. If you'd like to further support the channel, you can hit the uh, join button to become a member or you can hit the super thanks button or find the link to the merch store in the video's description. If you're ever shopping on the Epic Game Store, be sure to use my creator code STU1701. Either way, thank you so much for watching. My name's Stu and I will see you guys next time. Holy crap, I can't believe I did the whole outro in one breath. Man, I'm getting better at that.